Hello there, what's up? We're in the next part. I shall continue to put this disclaimer out there or a caveat look. My camera is problematic for me right now, so every so often my speech lags, and if it's currently doing that, please just listen to what I have to say because the hearing ear and the seeing eye both are from the Lord, and faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if you hear, all you need is that. All you need is to hear a tim to da dim. Couldn't say that enough. Anyway, y'all, yeah, right, guys. Blessedness, according to the scriptures, is you know, is uh, allotted or awarded an individual based on holiness literally holiness holiness is what blesses you consecration to jesus is what blesses you not so much your material wealth or your material standing or your position here on earth in a very physical um perspective if you are metaphysically holy i.e if you are spiritually consecrated circumcised and all that good stuff that's what makes you blessed so if you are peachy with jesus in good standing with him you're the best even though you might be the least on earth understand that ultimately you're going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven it's gonna be lovely you're gonna be like thor that can be the only person to pick up the hammer but y'all don't want to pick up no hammer because y'all don't even think there is a hammer to be picked up because you don't believe in eternity you are nihilistic albeit being witches which brings me to the next point in question please go check out the previous parts to gauge your uh bearings Wishes or wishes, I like I said, everything I do, I do it for you. My ministry is very targeted towards wishes. Many of them are in the entertainment industry, so maybe I might even, uh, you know, attract celebrities. I don't know. It would be great because you know I like some of them, and it's like, but do you really have to go there? Do you have to go to hell? Anyway, listen, you guys. I do not for the life of me understand how you can believe in Satan and not believe in God. You believe in Satani. You believe that he can give everything you've ever wanted your dream come true. You are lost and you don't want to be found or free. Oh, how you believe in randomness is weird. And I'm speaking right now to people who have got such intelligence naturally, evidencing the fact that natural intelligence has got nothing to do with spiritual um, IQ. You've got like literally, you know, there's emotional quota and then there is like intellectual quota. There is a spiritual quota too. We shall call that SQ for the purposes of my analogy. Just because you've got a high IQ, maybe even a high EQ, does not mean you've got a high SQ. Spiritual quota is your ability to be able to just, by spiritual common sense, figure out that the one must obviously exist since this other one does exist. So prior to me coming to Jesus Christ, hallelujah, amen. I love the Lord, he's my king. What about you? Do you know him? So that was just a little bit of a jam, an interlude in the middle of an otherwise quite deep message. It heavy. It was like an icebreaker. Okay. Prior to me coming to the king of the universe, I was you a novice, just very scared. Didn't know what it is that I was scared of, but I just knew I was scared of it. Didn't want to devil or touch it, just as long as I can pretend. Doesn't exist, I'm good to go. When it comes to all things spiritual, I have always, and I believe it was a gift of God, because... <sighs> Just like a child being born with a hereditary with a hereditary um, disease that they got from, you know, indeed, it is a hereditary from a parent. If you can avoid certain things, you will avoid that disease. So if your mama done died from breast cancer, you are better off, you know, just going perpetually for mammograms because you have been given that predisposition uh, naturally by mere virtue of your genetics, right? So in my family or even alcoholism, there, you know, there are people who can uh, drink and not get turned into alcoholics, but there are others that from their first little drink, they're a goner. The same thing is true with drugs. If you've got the issue, generally just kind of wreaking havoc, jumping about like a kangaroo in your family, you have got a vested interest as a young person on the come up of waiting that thing in my family it's alcohol in a very physical sense uh but in the spiritual sense it's sorcery utagati witchcraft yes in my family the hereditary disease is dabbling in dark arts how ominous right people in my family don't just experiment with witchcraft they go full in and they do a deep dive they snorkel they snorkel they grab all different kinds of paraphernalia to dive deep into this proverbial ocean and they even you know bring little waterproof cameras and a need to take pictures of the wildlife my family members have got a natural predisposition to sorcery and it's been going on for a minute when i was a kid my grandmother done dunked my poor unfortunate face in some steamy water 
her with some funny little herbs because she was taking out the darkness out of the children. And I, for the life of me, hated that ritual, have hated it all my life, didn't understand why it was done, likely gave me demons now that I think about it, but that's just the kind of stuff that happens naturally in my household, in black households a lot across South Africa, in Africa. Mm we have got this like natural predisposition for upsata energy and we don't call it upsatani hey we call it african spirituality whatever that even means because spirituality there is only one such that actually makes sense out here in these streets it's christ but you know africans have this thing about rejecting the gospel because it came through the white man hmm can like answer the baby with the bath water and keep the baby that's what's good if you got abused by colonialism and slavery how about you use that see it as the bath water and keep the baby the lord god almighty jesus okay uh, is who you need to take plus it was not all the colonizers and all the slave masters that wreaked havoc in your life let's be honest many of us would not even be freed from the oppression systematically so that we were endured under if it wasn't for white people so black people you need to like you know look at history with a balanced eye nonetheless let's continue so because of that general you know bias that dwells inside the black genome as a black person therefore the best thing you can do for yourself especially when you live in africa is to just be nicely ignorant because hmm? in this instance ignorance truly is bliss of all things metaphysical because you are highly unlikely going to get trained to the true metaphysical interaction that saves as a black person growing up in africa you are highly unlikely going to be given the gospel first in its pure form you will first be given ancestral worship such an other thing initially you are going to be dunked in a pool of dirty water and the apparent practice of you being cleansed from demons you didn't even know you had or dark or ominous forces or acknowledgement of ancestors you've never met or whatever you are highly likely going to be endured through a ritual of that nature first before you find a bible in the house and read it it's unfortunate so me as a person growing up somehow miraculously i frankly think i am the spiritual version however of matilda you know how matilda is this kid that grew up in a household where she was a genius child and was clear from like very little if you've read the roald dahl book matilda it was very clear that she was like you know a special kid she was incredibly gifted her teacher picked this up but she had this irresponsible cantankerous family that for the life of them did not know the difference between a regular kid and a, a prodigy mm. so they just ignored matilda and how she was busy you know spelling her name using fruits and vegetables in the water at just three months old couldn't pick it up couldn't figure it out couldn't figure it out until the teacher found that who oh, this kid she's coming to the library at just two years old <gasps> what is up with this child and so somebody else discovered matilda i personally think i am like the spiritual version of matilda there has been a spiritual ingenuity in me that has existed from very formative years i've just miraculously happened to choose what was perfect and right for me in the run-up to my redemption so that by the time i gave my life to christ i would not have to repent from too much and i would also not have to be delivered from too much i never could have known that but for the supernatural enablement of my person the lord gave me spiritual eq basically sq he gave me sq spiritual uh, quota and intelligence and ingenuity spiritually from long ago from before i even got redeemed and from the time i was a child i've always been very avoidant of things that could have landed me in some hot water i didn't easily participate in spiritual games i did not easily but I, my spirit was very sensitive to spiritual things and uh, let me tell you a story when i was maybe king started three grade uh, five yes i was um, i was born in 1984 i am a geezer so when i was in grade five one of my friends in primary school was busy doing the satanic ritual in the bathrooms to the kids there she said that she could make people faint by just doing some kind of a ritual over them right in the girls bathroom she would hold their mouths and uh, press their chest and then they would just like somebody would be standing behind her or she would be against the wall and this girl would just pick them up and just lay them down gently uh, and then they would wake up again and i was very cynical about this i thought they were faking it the girls that she did this experiment on it was 
was literally a satanic ritual she was not only holding them and the ears but she was also whispering something into the ear while she was doing this thing and i just kept on watching it watching and watching it all the girls kept on falling and falling and falling in the bathroom right with this girl experimenting in this way with this little project i don't know who she learned it from um where she i mean black girl in the gassy probably got trained by some other irresponsible perhaps teenage like sibling or something she brought it to school and did it during like in, in the morning before classes during lunch and after school and i just watched this girl do this over maybe like three days and uh, too many girls and they kept on fainting and then after they fainted they would lie there and then she would be like see see almost like she was a magician see i've got powers and then she would say something and snap her fingers it was like a form of hypnosis and after like doing this thing and snapping her fingers the people would come out of this trance because i've always been very yeah you know yeah cynical I, you know i just didn't believe easily i've never been gullible or credulous or anything of that nature uh yeah no i just looked at it on some whatever these gangster chicks been they, they've been told in advance they're like a magician's assistant they know what to do uh, uh you spoke to these girls there's no way they're truly fainting and there's also no way that they are truly coming back up only because you did that little mantra okay whatever it's a lie and i did not allow her to do this to me because for me what 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 i was told in the spirit even though i was not saved i was not born again yet uh, i was just made i was given just an ominous warning there was just a, a feeling that this is not going to end well for me i was asked by this girl i can do it on you and you'll be okay and there were many other ladies little girls that did it and it came out all right okay and i was like no <laughs> no and i just felt like this thing is going to end my life i I felt like it was gonna kill me literally just kill me i felt like it was dangerous and yet she was doing it to so many girls and they were coming back up again when she would do like a snappy thing it was a ritual it was a satanic ritual but because i was such a scientific little cynicist i wanted to prove that they're faking it by a pretender and in me i'm not going to be a magician's assistant assistant i'm going to make it clear that this is no trick i'm awake look i'm still here like oh, uh, yeah so after three days of this activity in my endeavors to disprove this thing i allowed this chick to do this ritual on me against all that judgment against the ominous feeling that i had that this is not good it's gonna kill me and guess what happened with just me out of all the queue of girls in the school that she did this with i fainted and i had an epileptic fit for about five minutes they had to call a teacher who basically gave everybody a hard time and told them where to get off like you're, you're gonna kill a student in the school boys came into the it was in the girls bathroom where she would do these rituals they came in and they, they literally the little boys had to rock up me acting like little paramedics and i believe it was one of the boys that ran to the teachers on some there is a girl in the bathroom fitting on the ground i you know yeah i did not know that this happened my mind oh and she also did apparently that thing of wake up wake up come up gotta wake up wake up or like whatever it is that she did the mantra that she would speak to wake a person out of the state she did it with me and it didn't work it didn't work i didn't come up out of that i only came up out of it like by the time i woke up out of that state i had a teacher looking over me and a whole bunch of boys in the girls bathrooms and basically there was a crowd like a person that had just been you know like the spectator value the spectator value that you would get at a car accident with people just walking at a body like a dead body yeah i had a crowd of people and they were five seconds away from calling the ambulance the paramedics and whatnot they ended up not doing it this girl was rebuked later on there was a disciplinary hearing they didn't call the parents or anything like literally the teachers kept it in the school they kept it closed in they didn't report it which for me now that i think back that was weird they were supposed to tell parents um this chick was made to stop doing this she never did it again after what happened with me but the way that i reacted to it was far more extreme than everybody else essentially that was god saying i told you not to go in here this is a spiritual ritual and what it did to me was what it is that i, I convulsed guys on the floor it's like whatever came it's like something came into me and convulsed me and whatever it is that came into me when that thing was happening it did not respond it did not respond to this girl's magic trick to snap me out of it i only snapped out of it after some time 
time had progressed and I, when i woke up everyone was looking at me and they explained to me what happened i was like whoa i didn't feel anything other than there's just pain at the back of my head because uh, you know how when you fall when I, I mentioned that when when a girl would fall there somebody would pick them up from the back or carry them from the back or like catch them basically a trust exercise well apparently i fell in a direction where i was just thrown it's like i was convulsed and my head hit the wall i fell on the floor and i i fitted i convulsed and her snapping me out with her little mantra or her uh, incantation didn't work that was the lord telling me that day that you are hyper sensitive spiritually garabo and in a way that many people aren't uh, you know it's written in god's word that the gifts of the holy spirit are without repentance i have always had a sensitivity to the spirit realm such that the random things like those and whenever i part if i don't allow it to participate in them they would act uh, what is this respond to me react to me very differently from everybody else and ever since that day i knew not to dabble with funny metaphysical things even though i didn't understand what what it is i i didn't term them metaphysical things or spiritual i just knew that otherworldly different stuff from the physical space don't do it because you're different you I, ever since that like it was a trait it was like something that god was using to tell me that if you dabble with funny things that people are recommending that are otherworldly and not off this plane if you capitulate to any one of them you're going to get taken like a tsunami because you're not like everybody else i've had gifts a, 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 a sensing a discernment given me from birth and it caused whatever demons that girl was putting in people to make them faith and come back out to have a feel day in my body it's like i'd always had a target on my back and the moment i capitulated to that it's like they try to take me out but god rescued me i felt like i was going to die that day and you know what i nearly did i nearly did so ever since then i've just not dabbled i have n- like ever since grade standard 3 grade 5 what are you like 12 yeah ever since the age of 12 i knew that i would not do anything beyond this plane and i stuck to those guns until i turned to christ at 27 at 26 and a half and it was only once i re- gave my life to christ that i found out what in the world happened in the bathroom that day let's continue with the story in the next part